All right, Raren, we're back once again. It has been a minute. How you doing, buddy? How you feeling about your uh, your Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge? Still feeling pretty confident? When's the last time we did one? Hold on, I'm trying to think. It's it's been it's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's but, last time but, I showed you some Xyz monsters, if you recall. Do you remember anything wait, about those, or is that escaped the the confines of your memory? Was that before the bazaar? What was life before the bazaar? Uh, <laughs> I don't. I I I briefly remember them because I remember most of them not being like insane. There were some. There they were. Uh, really they were one. like black bordered cards. Oh you know? yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, I figured. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna dumb it down for you a bit. We're gonna dumb it down for you a bit. Something I thought would be interesting to show you is the price and the lengths that Yu-Gi-Oh players will go to draw cards. As you know, in Yu-Gi-Oh, drawing cards comes at a premium and is very few and far between. So I thought I would show you a handful of cards today that are card draw specific, and you're gonna tell me at any point if you think these cards either got banned, limited, or are perfectly fine in the game. Sound good? Okay. I remember you saying that card draw is like normally banned, so. You know Pot of Greed, you know Pot of Greed, so that's that's what you have to compare to. Can you just throw that card in so I can start off really strong? And I'll act surprised. No, just be uh, like, that'd be fuck. too easy for you. I'm also not gonna show you Max C. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you that one too. That one's not in here. So, right, so here- So I'm two points card. ahead, right? Two points? What is no, this? You're, two, you're at zero. No, Mass Sorcerer, um, four, oh yeah, what are these called again? I gotta remember everything. Four summon thing. <laughs> Four stars. What are they? Levels. <laughs> when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent's life points, draw one card from your deck. Okay, so it has to deal damage to get a card. And then correct. Then, uh, then so you're damage just one either through either through. It doesn't have to attack directly. It can either be if it hits over something that's smaller, let's say, you can draw yeah. a card. Or if it does attack directly, you can also draw a card. Not only does it have you have a prerequisite here, but you only draw one card, which means it's just one for once. Why not just put a different card in? I feel like this is horrible. But hold you on. You tell me? Because like not tell listen, me. dude, this isn't fair. This is, this is not a fair video. You know this. Why Hearthstone is it not fair? Why is it not fair? Hearthstone has insane card draw. Everything's going to look like ass <laughs> compared to what we have. Oh, this is going to be so fun then. This is going to be so I, fun then. In Hearthstone, there were cards, especially in the early days, that were like one mana, put this on like a minion, and then if it when it attacks, get a card. That card wasn't playable. And all okay. it had to do was attack. Well, I mean, it kind of was, but it had to attack. Like it didn't even have to deal damage to the opponent. Like it just had to attack. You're telling me in Yu-Gi-Oh, okay. you guys are going through this length. This is an old ass card I'm imagining, right? I will let you know, most of the cards I'm showing you today are fairly old. Pre or post banned Pot of Greed. This is Pot of I Greed is, I will I will let you know when Pot of Greed is legal at this time. This is unplayable. This is, there's no way. But, 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 okay. but, okay. but, okay. but, okay. Pot okay. of Greed is limited to one copy. Unplayable. I'm not playing this card. Show me something else. This is, there's no, dude, there's no way. I'm playing a card that has this prerequisite that may not even give me a card draw. There has to be, unless there is another card that says attack your opponent's life directly. Like, and that is, that is it. But then I'm wasting two cards to draw one card. That sounds miserable. Anyway, I put this, this sounds bad. Final answer. Final answer. All right, let's talk about Mask Sorcerer. So Mask Sorcerer uh, was actually part of some of the early Exodia builds, as a matter of fact, because you had to play card draw if you were trying to see your all five pieces of Exodia and win the game, right? Okay. Uh, but yeah, this card's terrible. Okay. Started off oh strong. Uh, this card is just basic. You were just never going to waste a card on this. I, I will say in very, very, very old Yu-Gi-Oh, there may have been some people who did play this card uh, if you can get in with it and draw an extra card, like, cool. But for the most part, you'd rather just have a much higher value card. But it, it, at the end of the day, it does draw you a card. And it's one of the fir very few first cards that did let you draw cards that was, like, literally not Pot of Greed. So uh, people, like, would have considered it. How good would this card be if it drew you two cards if you got the effect? Oh, if it drew you two, I think it actually would have seen a lot of play. 100%. Because a lot of early Yu-Gi-Oh! 2... A lot of early Yu-Gi-Oh had like a lot of good removal too. So like the fact that it would plus you, uh, well, technically it already pluses you if you do uh, just get in now. But if you drew two cards off of this, oh, every deck would have played three of this, 100%. Okay, 100%. interesting. It would have it would have been mask. It would have been greed sorcerer instead of mask sorcerer. They would have just put his face on the, nice. on the guy nice. here. Okay, no, I, was, I was just curious because like the fact that you have that prerequisite just to, to draw a card, like drawing one's not worth it. So is drawing two like that good that you would actually put this in your deck and hope that you would draw the two. But I guess if you hit it, it would be that strong. I, I think so. 
I, I 100% think so. I think I showed you a card. I don't know if you remember Air Knight Parshaft. What does it do? So it was a tribute monster that when it dealt battle damage, you drew a card, uh, but it also had piercing. So oh, that it, um, it could hit through yeah. like your opponent's defenses and it had a higher attack stat too. That card did see play and it only drew you one card. There is like a world where you could cheat out like Mask Sorcerer or Air Knight Parshath, right? It's in the graveyard. You get to special summon it with like a monster reboard or something. And then it's like your big guy hits over their big thing and then Mask Sorcerer gets you a draw. Um, but Parshath was just by far and away a better card. So that's why that saw play. So yes, like Mask Sorcerer didn't see play, but Parshath also just drew you one card and that card saw a ton of play. All right, uh, next one. Let's even keep the streak going. Hey, I remember this card. Card Destruction. Do you? I, I mean, I, when I say I remember this card, I remember the art. I don't remember what actually what it does. This card was in the first starter decks, so uh, it's yeah, very, it's why. very. Uh... Again, when I when I say I remember this card, I don't remember the fucking does. I just remember the art. Card destruction. Both players discard as many cards as possible from their hands. Then each player draws the same number of cards they discard. So I don't know about you. If you were talking about like being iconic art. I love when art has like cards in the art like you can see there's like Yu-Gi-Oh cards in the artwork I don't know why I've just always loved when there's cards in the artwork of like from the game that you're playing it's just like it's very like you know like fourth wall right I got you yeah. I got you I don't know Hearthstone has like maybe I think there's one card they actually made a card called CCG that's what it's called battle cry death rattle outcast for demon hunter get a first edition demon hunter card and because a lot of those cards were that's nerfed funny. it's like the pre-nerf version it's actually like a really well designed card it's not playable that's a neat design that's it cool is. That's it's cool. cool that it's called CCG. Like it's literally like this is a yeah. this is a collectible card game. Anyways, let me think about this in Hearthstone terms. If both players discard their hand and you draw equal to the number of cards, that means you're minus one card, but you do get the cycle and so does your opponent. Your opponent has no Correct. cards in your hand. You need to have at least two for this to be worth it. This card doesn't draw you a card if this is the only card in your hand, right? Like it wouldn't because there's no cards in your hand left, so obviously not. Correct. Uh I actually I, a mechanics thing. Uh someone could correct me if I'm wrong on this because I forget, but I'm pretty sure you need to have each player needs minimum one card in hand to even activate this card i think okay. if one if okay this is the only card in your hand i don't even think you're allowed to activate it because i think you technically have to discard and draw but if someone if i'm wrong it's been a while uh someone could correct me <laughs> but i'm pretty sure that's how this card works seeing hearthstone that's it's really interesting hearthstone had a card called plot twist that was uh a one-sided effect of this and it only do it on your side and that card was okay. played because of a condition of the quest that you're playing it with but it wasn't played in like any other deck. Like you, there was a quest that, that you wanted to draw as many cards as possible. So like that really works. But in a game like Yu-Gi-Oh, you're minus one and you're, you're I guess discarding is better than Yu-Gi-Oh though because cards will go to the graveyard, I'm assuming. This is probably good in Yu-Gi-Oh. I think in Hearthstone, this is bad. It's like discarding cards doesn't really mean anything unless you're playing Warlock. And even then it's like, you have to have a pretty decent hand for those cards to actually do something. But for Yu-Gi-Oh, because you, you actually get to use your graveyard, this actually might be very good. Is it worth running a card like this if it benefits your opponent as well? Depending on what their hand is, of course. But I would imagine that most of the time this also benefits your opponent. I'm assuming yes, because you'd play this card and then you get to use your cards first. So like maybe that's the difference of you winning or losing the game. Okay, I, I think I talked myself into it. I think it was playable. I don't know if it was banned, but it was playable. What about what about limited? Limited's interesting. I guess so like because there's no mana cost, you would draw card destruction. You would you would cycle your hand. I'm using cycle, but like we all know based on what this card means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um sure. But then you're minus one. So would you play another one? Because then like maybe if you're really looking for another like a card in your deck, you would you would play it again. You're minus one another card, and it's like, God, that sounds so awful because it doesn't seem like you have a huge hand in Yu-Gi-Oh all the time, which I'm not. I guess maybe you would limit it, but I don't think you would. I think it's good enough to get played for one already. I don't know if you want more than one, but I also could be completely delusional here because maybe you this is like the best case scenario for drawing cards. Also, actually, maybe I'm undervaluing how good it is to just put cards in your graveyard like this. I don't think it was banned. I don't know about limited, but I'll say it wasn't bad for sure. It's tough for me to say this was limited because my thought process is you would only want to play one. But how good was it? So card destruction uh, is fucking crazy, actually. Ah! So let me give you some context here. So card destruction uh, for the for most of Yu-Gi-Oh's lifespan uh, in the early days, of course, card destruction was considered a card that was not very good. Okay. Uh, it, so much of Yu-Gi-Oh, the quality of individual cards was just so high that taking a minus and then, like you said, putting stuff into the graveyard. Remember, you're putting stuff in your opponent's graveyard as well. So you're basically having them set up for free, which is never good, right? So a lot of early Yu-Gi-Oh card destruction was just never particularly strong. 
Uh, maybe if you're playing like a mill deck exactly or something like that, sure. That's like a free, you know, potential few cards you can get off their deck. Why not? Okay. Uh, then what happened was as Yu-Gi-Oh! became more and more grave-centric and as archetypes started to get produced that had so much value out of the graveyard, like the monsters could just special summon themselves out of the graveyard for some cost or different things like that. Um, there's actually a whole series of uh, monsters, uh, an archetype known as Dark World. Dark World is an archetype that all the cards say, if this card is discarded to the graveyard, do X. So it's very like Warlock-like from uh, Hearthstone, from my understanding. Uh, these archetypes, I'm also referring to Dragon Rulers for anyone who might be familiar. Uh, these archetypes started coming into the forefront of Yu-Gi-Oh! And they had to do something about card destruction because activating card destruction when Dark World and Dragon Rulers and all these other archetypes were legal was just way too fucking good because you would basically go like, you would minus one on the card destruction, but you might come out plus five ahead on how much value you get out of those cards going to the graveyard. Right, so uh, card destruction got banned, actually. It was banned for like six years, as a matter of fact. Yeah, and if you can believe this, it is still limited to one to this very day and actually still sees play to this very day. Uh, incredibly, okay. incredibly well-aged card. Uh, very powerful, deceptively powerful, I think. And uh, yeah, a very scary card. Uh, sometimes if your opponent would fire a card destruction and they're playing one of those decks, you may as well just scoop it up because the game might just end immediately. As a result yeah, that makes of that. Sense. Okay, so this card became very good because an archetype supported it. Or archetypes, several. Like, say. there are yeah. several graveyard-based archetypes that this card was just absolutely Yeah, that makes incredible. sense. Yeah, and you would make up the value. You would make up the value for it. Th th yeah. yeah, that makes sense because, like like I said, like in Hearthstone, I, I don't even think there would be any discard cards that would really want this. Maybe I'm wrong, but, like, I, I don't know. I feel like it's not that great in Hearthstone. But, yeah, because you get the graveyard, it's so much better. All right, interesting, interesting. Yeah, and that's a big difference between our games. That's a big difference. Fuck. So, okay. Yeah, I remember the art of this card too. This looks familiar. Morphing Jar, flip both players, discard all cards in their hand, then both players draw five. Now, mechanically, do you need to have any cards in your hand for this effect to proc? No. Okay, this card's insane. I, 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 don't think there's a, I don't think there's a discussion. Like the thing is, is if you're putting this on the field, like you're probably using every card in your hand and it's like drawing five. I would imagine that's how that's gonna like interact majority of the time. Now, if your opponent like can okay. stop the flip, okay. like, yeah, you're probably pissed. But majority of the time, especially in early Yu-Gi-Oh, this is probably good enough that you would probably play it just because drawing cards seems like you want it. Like drawing cards isn't as good as it is in Hearthstone. So therefore this is just a very consistent effect. Okay. Dude, that's that's the ver that's my verdict. It's very good. <laughs> I think, that's I think it? it is. Yeah, that's it's it? done. <laughs> I think, okay. right? Like, you say, do I need to say anything else? Was it banned? Banned? Honestly, it probably was, to be honest. I could see it being banned. That's a that's a very okay. scary effect. That's okay. a very scary effect. Like, if you're going first, especially if you're going first, like, you put this on board, and then you're like, okay, good luck. Like, if I'm going to draw five cards now. And then, sure, but if you have a hand of Morphing Jar and several monsters, you can't play all those monsters immediately, necessarily. I think you're, you're willing to take that risk consistently, if that's the case. I think you're... I think if you're like... The, the, my, my thought process would be when you say something like that is let's say my hand is four morphing jars because I think you could put four of a, copies of this in your hand, right? Three. Uh, three. So you could put three, right? Two of those morphing jars are in your hand. You have all three and you play one. You don't care about discarding the other ones because you're you're wanting to cycle anyways. So it's like you were going to play okay. that card to cycle it your hand regardless. So this is completely fine. So one of the biggest differences between card destruction and morphing jar is obviously the fact that card destruction is a spell and morphing jar is a monster. Uh, okay. And so like card destruction, you can like, you're not waiting for your opponent to like attack into it, nor do you have to wait a full turn to morphing jar, right? Because the problem is with morphing jar is that you have to set it face down for a turn. And then your opponent's turn, they can do anything they want to interact with this morphing jar. Uh, and then... If they attack into the jar, it's great. It goes off. Cool. But if they have removal, then like you just kind of wasted your turn doing nothing, setting up this morphing jar. Uh, whereas like, again, card destruction is like a lot more proactive in that way. You're not you buying it, are you? You're not buying no, it. No, I think you're baiting me. I think this card's very good. I am baiting you. Yeah, morphing jar's cracked. Morphing jar's insane. <laughs> it says draw five. It says draw five. So let's give you some context here. Uh, morphing jar was in fact banned. I think it's... I think it's limited right now. I don't recall, actually. It might even be at three, to be honest. Let me double check, because I'm actually kind of curious. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, like, as Yu-Gi-Oh! gets older, this here. probably isn't playable anymore, especially in a world where Maxi exists. So it's funny you... It's at one. It's at one. Uh, okay. It's actually funny you say that, because it actually got banned 
I think it got banned more uh, recently than earlier on, as a matter of fact. So Morphing Jar was limited to one very quickly. One of the biggest reasons for that was because Morphing Jar was a card that helped enable uh, mill strategies very effectively. The jars are all a series of cards that like do X, then draw five cards. And typically it's getting stuff out of the deck most of the time. Uh, so all these kind of combined made this really degenerate mill strategy that was like actually the best deck in Japan early on. Uh, and Morphing Jar okay. was very quickly limited to one over here in uh, in the TCG. Now, Morphing Jar uh, was, it's kind of like everything you said. The fact that it draws five is crazy. You don't care if you like pitch two cards, if you're going to get plus three off of the Morphing Jar, right? It is a bit slow. And sometimes your opponent can like obviously tell you're setting a Morphing Jar. Like even by nowadays standards, if your opponent goes like set a monster, which this wouldn't happen, it'd be more in like a retro format. But in a retro format, if your opponent goes set a monster and set like three or four cards in the back row, it's kind of obviously a morphing jar because they're trying to just get the full value off the jar and draw five. Uh, that's kind of like, it's it's very telegraphed a lot of the time if you're an older Yu-Gi-Oh player. The fact that you're just getting five cards over your opponent, even if your opponent gets a little bit of setup off of it and they get like maybe a card, you don't care if you draw five. If Morphing Jar resolves and you go plus four, plus five, you probably win the game off of it. It's even better if your opponent doesn't attack it and you get to do it during your turn because then you get first crack with all the five new cards that you have. Yep. Uh, so it could be a incredibly good card under a lot of circumstances. Wouldn't see play in every deck, so surprisingly um it, it was something that people sometimes wouldn't want to give their opponent a bunch of new cards because right because if you're really far ahead morphing jar is a bad card because now all of a sudden you're giving them away to get back into the game so it's not like it doesn't have its downsides but more often than not it was sort of like a reset oh shit button where if you're falling behind you can set a morphing jar and give yourself a fresh new hand and now all of a sudden you might be back into the game where before you may have been out of it right so uh very very fun card um can be degenerate under the right circumstances, but uh, still a card that uh, people just love it. This this little eyeball with teeth. He's very cute. I mean, it's pretty bad in Hearthstone standpoint but, or uh, perspective, but I mean, I'm glad you guys like it. Graceful Charity, discard th card broken. <laughs> Draw three, discard two, insane. For Yu-Gi-Oh standards, insane. Plus one, guaranteed plus one card. Well, I guess you're playing this card. Well, so the Graceful it's Charity, yeah, it's a three for three. It's a three for three. No, it's it's insane. No, no, it's nuts. You you would be like discarding cards at Yu-Gi-Oh is like we we've talked about it too many times. You're you're too happy to discard cards that this is not a downside. It is like an upside majority of the time. So what you I think play, this is better or Pot of Greed's better? Okay. I think Pot of, I think pot of Greed. Well, hold on. Now that you say it, I don't know. No, 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 no. Pot of Greed. Like the only reason that makes me say that though is because Pot of Greed is like so iconic that I feel like it's impossible for me to be like, oh, like this card's better because I would have heard about this card more often. But maybe Pot of Greed's art is just so funny that people like focus on it. If it gives you context, Pot of Greed was played a lot in the anime. Like every single character had Pot of Greed. And uh, I, so like that's also part of like its notoriety throughout Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and it also that came out sense. first. Like, it came out before Graceful Charity. Yeah, I don't, so, like, Hearthstone has a card that is three mana, draw three cards, discard one. And that card was played, uh, again, but, like, the, our graveyard's not as good. This is the same thing, but arguably better for yu gi like, perspective. And that makes me believe this card is, like, insanely good. And I honestly, it's probably banned. Like, it's just, like, if I'm cycling and I get to put cards in my graveyard, like, why am I not playing this? Like, you look at, it's funny because you show me Morphing Jar, and Morphing Jar, I think, is good. But then this one, like, I, I didn't even have to read the full sentence to understand how good it is. <laughs> so I draw three, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm going in chronological order for this, but uh, you're correct. It's banned. It's been banned for, for ages. I think it was banned in like 2006, 2007. So it's been banned for like, what, 17 years? Uh, yeah, Graceful Charity is cracked. I, I think for the most part, people would agree that Pot of Greed is probably the better card. But I actually think over time, Graceful Charity might arguably be better with the way Yu-Gi-Oh! was aged only because graveyard setup and there's so much value to be gotten out of the graveyard uh, that depending on like the deck you're playing, even though like it's a three for three versus a straight up plus one that Pot of Greed gets you, the grave setup and then getting the value out of the graveyard, it, then it's like you're drawing three deep into the deck instead of two. So it basically is a Pot of Greed that goes a card deeper, uh, but it really is dependent on the deck and things. But they're both just insanely broken cards. I was kind of surprised I hadn't shown you this yet that uh, this might shock you. Graceful Charity and Pot of Greed were both legal at the same time, if you can believe that. That's pretty sick. Here's a, here's a question for you. I've actually like thought about this because I think in Hearthstone, they may be a different answer. If Pot of Greed and Graceful Charity were 
unbanned. Let's say that you're allowed three copies of it. Do you think the same decks that are currently the best decks in the format would still be the best decks? Probably because they would just they would just play three copies of this and it would just be even more consistent. So yeah, oh, probably. Okay. Some of the so, best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh now are like decks that play out of the graveyard. So yeah. So here's the here's my counter argument to that. Does do those decks need more consistency if they already have enough? Like would this not alleviate some of the problems that other Yu-Gi-Oh decks would have? Cuz like I'm uh, guessing you could argue that yes but i would say that for the most part the decks you're already making the decks that are doing the crazy unfair things more likely to do their crazy unfair thing instead of bolstering a deck that is inherently less consistent to like make it be able to compete because it's not like you're raising the ceiling uh, or the consistency of the bad decks but then you're also raising the consistency of the good decks too so That's it's fair. like yeah i don't think i think it's just it, it doesn't really do anything at that point it's like who could draw more graceful charities and pot of greeds and maybe like execute okay the game, so right? and the overall like experience fun. would be worse yeah okay that makes sense okay yeah, yeah. i think I so now okay, to be yeah. fair to be fair there are counters to these cards nowadays where back in the day like there weren't many uh, so, especially on turn zero, like there are hand traps that can stop Graceful Charity and Pot of Greed from resolving. So there is at least ways to interact with them, but if they have multiple, because one of the biggest things with Graceful Charity and Pot of Greed is they don't have a once per turn restriction, right? right. Um, and we're going to see some reinterpretations potentially of some of these cards and uh, get your input on those a little bit later on. But for okay. now, okay. you got it correct. Uh, yeah, Graceful Charity, crazy good card, uh, very iconic, very old card, um, but just, uh, yeah, just, just an incredible card. You like draw three cards. What about draw five cards? Oh my god, what is this thing? Yamada Dragon. All right, this card cannot be special summon. This card returns to the owner's hand during the... Oh, sorry, I should probably say the level here if this can't be special summon. This is... Uh, this card. So this card cannot be special summon. This card returns to the owner's hand during the end phase of the turn. That is, this card is normal summon or flip face up. This card inflicts battle damage to your opponent's life points. Draw cards from your deck until you have five cards in your hand. Okay. So I made the argument before that Mass Sorcerer was bad because you're one for one -ing. This has the potential to draw you five cards at this point, but it's you can't mm -hmm. just normal summon. You have to sacrifice something to play this, right? You have to sacrifice two monsters because it's a level seven. Just so I am clear, there is no way to play this card without sacrificing monsters, right? There's no there way. are ways. Uh, let me give you a card that could potentially help you out here. Okay, because yeah, I mean, listen, Drawing potentially five cards is good, but if you can't cheat it out in quotations, uh, I don't know if this is playable. Let me give you, let me give you this card. Uh, Mausoleum of the Emperor. Both players can normal summon or set monsters about tributes by pay. <coughs> Sorry, uh, I almost threw up uh, reading this. Uh, <laughs> you can play this card without sacrificing two monsters, which means in the same turn, you can go Mausoleum into Yamada. This has to inflict battle damage. This has a pretty beefy attack. 2,600 something. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. I'm like, even if you put it... So uh, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I feel like if you're putting it face down, it has to be in defense mode. If you were going to tribute or just no, like tribute set it, yes, it would be face down defense. Yes. So and with Mausoleum, you would like play this and then you would want to attack with it immediately. See, here's the thing, man. Like that sounds really good, but then it's the same issue that the mast had. But you're you're the, so the upside is better. You are playing two cards to play this, but if you're drawing five because you're minus two cards and you have an empty hand, it's better. The only contingent here is like, do you actually deal? And with twenty six hundred, depending on when you play this, it could be really really good. But it also could just do nothing. The 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 variance of this card is very high to very low. This is a very Hearthstone esque card. I feel like. I mean, kind of. I get. There's like there are cards in Hearthstone. I believe that's like if you deal damage to your opponent, draw a card or something. And those cards were unplayable. <laughs> so. But what about also, five cards? Yeah, five cards is nuts. It's also like Hearthstone just has better draw on average. Like there's better stuff you can be doing. So I don't know how. I got if Mass Sorcerer saw somewhat play, surely this sees play. And you could run Mausoleum three copies of it. So you can run three copies of Mausoleum. Uh, one thing you may have missed, Mausoleum is also a field spell. Uh, there is a card in Yu-Gi-Oh called Terraforming. Terraforming is a spell that just says, add a field spell card from your deck to your hand. So you could theoretically run six copies of Mausoleum. Yeah, because like, I guess like, 2,000 life or the chance to draw five is worth the payoff, right? So the, the problem with Mass Sorcerer is that you're only drawing one, which means you have to attack, you have to draw two cards for it to be worth it. This card is like, you just have to be able to deal damage. And regardless of what your hand size is, it's just good for you. Obviously you want your hand to be more empty. I mean, if you're defending this card, so it can attack, it's probably way better than Mass Sorcerer. If it helps you too, if it helps you too, Yu-Gi-Oh's hand limit is six. Oh, I didn't realize that. Really? Yeah, so if so you 
if you have... So it's not like Hearthstone where if you draw, when you have six cards in hand, it just immediately goes to the graveyard. So basically what happens is at the end of your turn, if you have more than six cards in your hand, you have to discard until you're down to six. So uh, yeah, our hand limit is a lot smaller too. So that might help provide some context here. I was I was going to say, I remember playing Master Duel and my hand was like 8 million at some point because some guy just kept yeah, making yeah. me draw cards. But yeah, that makes sense. If you're drawing off max C, yeah, you can draw all those cards, but then at the end of your turn, you have to discard down to six. That's the rule. Oh my God, is this good? Like, I guess, okay, you every minion has charge unless it's your first turn. So you get to swing with this theoretically the, the, the turn you play it. You can draw up to five, which is really good. You just have to inflict battle damage. How likely are you to inflict battle damage? And by Yu-Gi-Oh standards today, is this playable? I don't think this is playable by Yu-Gi-Oh standards today. You could do better stuff than this. But in older Yu-Gi-Oh formats, like this has to be good. I feel like the trade-off here is fine. I feel like you'd, you, the upside of this is too good that you probably would try to make it work, regardless of okay. what deck you're running. It just is fine. And I guess the good thing about Mausoleum too is that it bypasses probably a lot of the constraints of other monsters. So like kind of a ubiquitous card, right? You, you just put in like a bunch of different decks that want to play big monsters. Because again, if, okay. you, if, you're, if you're paying 2,000 life points for like a monster like this, you would do that with other monsters. And if the cost of 2,000 means I'm probably winning the game, like you're paying that every single time. So it's probably playable. I don't know about banned. I feel like banned might be a little bit too much, but I can maybe see it limited. But honestly, I think I would focus on Mausoleum more than Yamada Dragon. I don't think Yamada Dragon's playable without the Mausoleum, unless there's another card. So like this card's probably fine. I think Mausoleum's like the better of the two, but I think it was probably played if this, if this combination was allowed. Final answer? Final answer. Final answer. This card sucks. This card sucks. So <laughs> but okay, hold on. I, is I, is okay, Mausoleum a good card? Going. Is Mausoleum a good so, card? So Mausoleum has uh made its way into decks that do more degenerate things than summoning a Yamada dragon. I think the biggest okay. thing that you identified is that you do have to do battle damage with this card. And the problem is with Yu-Gi-Oh, remember, you're allowed to interact on the opponent's turn. The problem is there are so many trap cards specifically that are just removal, even just one-for-one -one removal, that, yeah, like, you could draw five cards and that's the dream, but you have to make sure the kind of the path is clear that you can actually hit in with Yamada Dragon. And one of the biggest downsides of this card, too, is that it bounces back to your hand during the end of the turn. It's a spirit monster. That's what spirits do. They come out for the turn, they go back to your hand during the end phase. So if you don't get in with this Yamada Dragon, it's going to come back to your hand, and now you either have to mausoleum pay 2,000 more life points, or you have to tribute it back out to the field and it's doing nothing. I won't say people didn't try to make this card work because obviously if you could make it work, the dream is there. There are also some other cards. Uh, I believe uh, Totem Dragon is another card that say if you tribute it for a uh, dragon type monster, it can count as two tributes, right? So that way you don't need two monsters. You just need one. Um, there are ways to like sort of help get this guy out onto the field, but the fact you can't really cheat it out because it can't be special summoned, uh, it, it's just... If you could pull it off, you, it was a moment you were never going to forget, but it this it was just so bad. It was I, just never going to happen. I want you to know that you baited me because of Mausoleum. Because my thought, pro my thought process was exactly what you just said. I'm not fucking sacrificing two monsters for an effect like this. It's not worth it. But Mausoleum is like mana cheating. So it's like, okay, maybe it's actually playable. Whatever, it's fine. I'll take the L. It's fine. Mausoleum has helped strategies that basically when they summon the monster, they will win them the game immediately. Uh, and like not have to go to combat, basically. Like kind of stun type cards that prevent your opponent from like special summoning or things like that. That's where Mausoleum has been very good. Um, okay. But again, it, it needs to be in the right deck. So I would say Mausoleum, in the, under the right circumstances, is very good. And like, sure, for this Yamada Dragon, it helps cheat it out. But like, there are better things to do than summon Yamada Dragon with Mausoleum. Yeah, I think that makes that makes sense. That makes that makes absolute sense. Yeah, for sure. Well, like, I, gonna... but but for, but at, at you know when you're on the playground, if you got Yamada Dragon off, oh, you were gonna be a legend. People were gonna love you for that. God damn it! I got baited. That is actually like the worst, most ruthless <laughs> baited thing you've done to me. All right, here's your next one. You even had the terraforming too. Like it's like look at this whole fucking thing we could do with this man. It's so good. I'm what just is... dangling the carrot in front of you. Whoa, this art's kind of sick. Drag down into the grave both players reveal their hands each chooses one card from their opponent's hand then you discard the chosen cards from both players hand then both players draw one card okay hold on i gotta think this through in a world where you have five cards okay and so you wouldn't you, yeah what's your starting hand it's five right or just five. four yep okay so let's say i play this first i have four cards my opponent has five they see four cards from my hand they pick one they discard it i draw another card and then i get to use that card first i get to see all five cards in their hand I pick the one I don't want to deal with. I discard that, and then they draw another card. So I, 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 there's only one unknown at that point. 
that's really good for you regardless if the, like even if you only drew one card you're minus one but you get their whole hand basically in a sense is that good enough to see play what happens if your opponent doesn't have a card in their hand can you still play this i actually don't think you can activate this okay so you, you, both players need at least one card and you need two in your minimum hand minimum one this. yeah minimum one man i don't know like so at this point it's not even for the card draw it's like do i think knowing my opponent's hand is good enough and like you've told me before that's like a really really good thing to do in Yu-Gi-Oh. then you know okay. what to, you know what to play around you know what you're going up against because i don't think this is like you've shown me way better cards than this i feel like when it comes to drawing yeah why would i show you this weird you're, yeah i fuck this guy man it's it doesn't have to be for the information like you're going minus two well minus minus one but then you you cycle a card and then your opponent's minus one well not even minus one they they just cycle a card as well so the information of this has to be the reason you're playing this i don't think minus one's good enough because your opponent knows what you have in your hand as well but you get to go like you would you would only want to play this going first i feel like if you go second like it's kind of whatever because then your opponent are like going second with this card feels so bad because your opponent's already probably played a lot of their cards anyways i don't know like do you the more i think about this the more i don't like it okay and hearthstone this is unplayable i'm never playing this card in hearthstone there's no fucking way i think it's bad i don't know i can't see it I, there has to be something i'm missing like a card that works with this in a particular way sure. but sure adding a card to your graveyard is good but there's other cards that you showed me that do that even better the thing is is like the more cards that are banned that draw cards in this format or the, i guess i should say in this game because you guys don't have a format the the the, the like the way better like this thing is looks right because like if you don't have any other options this is fine like you're like okay fuck it right. like if i need to draw a card like this is fine but like surely there's something better you could be doing with this so i don't think it's that good i can't wait to hear this is it good final answer final answer go so drag down into the grave is interesting uh so this grave. card one thing you may not have realized with it is that you can set all of your spells and traps in your own hand so your opponent has less choices or maybe they don't have any choice because if you activate this and have one card in hand they have to discard the only card in your hand so you can Fair. specific basically you can tailor pick what they discard under a lot of circumstances um Historically, this card has not been very good. By modern standards, it's only good in the right decks. But what's interesting is how this card is aged. So similar to what I was saying before about those uh, other strategies like Dark World, for instance, that get benefits from cards being discarded to the graveyard. Dragdown's gotten interesting in the fact that when you're... Now that we have a lot of hand traps and like turn zero interaction... Dragdown's really neat because, yeah, you are taking a minus one, but you actually get the information out of your opponent's hand. So now you can see, oh, they have this hand trap, they have this hand trap. The hand knowledge now allows you to play optimally into what they have to disrupt you. And now you can play around certain things so that you don't maybe automatically lose the game if you play into something that they might have to disrupt you during your turn. Um, and that's where this card's gotten kind of cool. But for the most part, unless you're playing this in like very specific strategies or you're using that in that very specific way to look at your opponent's hand, there are some cards that are kind of better at doing this now uh for the most part this card is uh i wouldn't say this card is bad i would say it needs to be under the right circumstances that this card is actually uh pretty good pretty good okay okay see i feel like if you're not going first though this card's awful like i feel like <laughs> i feel like if you like that's why i said that like yeah you could put your whole hand down but if you're going second this card feels miserable like it, it right. is going second this card is definitely a lot worse this card is okay. definitely a lot worse okay tell us what you think about this one what the fuck is this thing sorry da kochi the Kochi, the, Koichi. That, the Koichi, the battle, the battle enchanted locomotive. What is this thing? Is this a fucking train? It's a train. It's a train. Oh my god! Is it enchanted? Enchanted. Enchanted. Battle chanted. Battle chanted. My bad. Oh my god, dude. The way that this card, like, the way that it's just worded, just looks so fucking silly with the art. I don't know why. <laughs> like the combination doesn't make any sense. But whatever. You, like fucking terrifying not gonna lie have you ever seen a train with fangs before my god all right what is this four level flip draw one card for each of this you control draw an additional card what <laughs> i mean okay so worst case it cycles if it flips and we've already made the case that cycling's fine then it gets kind of sick well it's not another copy of dekoichi i'll show you bokoichi oh sorry my bad boy <laughs> What the fuck is going on in this game? What is that? Is that the rear end of it? Oh my god, what is this? Two stuff. Okay. I mean, so the concept here is that you play. Oh my god, there's more. Wait, is this the same card? So the concept would be you play Dekoichi first, and then you on the next turn you would play Boykochi, right? Sorry. And then you draw two cards, but then you're so you're cycling two for two cards. And I guess you have the like the things on board, but how much does that matter? I guess if your opponent doesn't answer it, it could get really funny. 
<laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Is there like a big payoff to having a bunch of these on the board and then drawing cards? I don't know. Okay. Is there? My logic is if there is, this is a lot better because it, currently what this looks like is you're just cycling, which I guess is fine, but you'd want to potentially get an upside in your card draw rather than cycling because you're also not discarding here. You're playing these cards and I guess if they die, like it's fine. Well, actually that, that opens like another like can of worms here because maybe there's a card that says summon all monsters with the same name from your graveyard. Uh, maybe that is something I'm not really sure because then you can get a potentially a lot, but then you'd have to flip this. Can you, if I pull a monster from my graveyard, can it go in face down position or no? There are uh, there are some cards that can special summon the monster set face down. I will say they are not as common as ones that just special summon it face up. See, like the, this is such a, what, what, is, what are these? Like who makes this shit? I guess this is fine. Hearthstone has Loot Hoarder, which is literally what I'm comparing this to. Loot Hoarder is two mana to one death rattle draw a card. You cycle that. It takes a full turn because your opponent often doesn't trade into it. So you're trading with the Loot Hoarder unless it's like a free ping. This is almost the same concept, but the minion has to not flip before you play the second car. And if it does flip, the worst case scenario is you're cycling a card. Is that fine? You're also taking up your monster summon. I guess theoretically you could flip. No, but then, okay, so if you flip, you could only flip on a battle phase or can you do it at the start of your... Yeah, so if your opponent attacks into it, it'll flip up. You draw the card, then Dekoichi may or may not be destroyed. Uh, or if he survives, the turn comes back around to you. You can flip Dekoichi up and draw the card. But you you could you could flip it. Not It doesn't have to be on your battle phase. It, it could be whatever. Yeah, you can okay. manually flip it up during your turn if you wish. Why is this fucking train the hardest thing about this video? What the hell? <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> I feel like this is bad. Like I'm trying to think my way through this. The only okay. asterisk to this is like, if there is a payoff, like if you get the whole train track, maybe like then, then like this, <laughs> the this could pop off. Track. Like I'm trying to think of what like the big monster would be, right? You know how you build towards like the three headed blue eyes? Like what is the equivalent of that for the trains? And like, if there is something that's good, then you're only getting an upside here because you're also just cycling towards that win condition. But if, okay. these, if these are like independent of anything else and they're just cycling, I feel like it's not worth putting these cards in your deck. What if I show you this card? Okay, I get ready for this pronunciation. Do you pronounce the T here? <laughs> Sukoyomi? Hey, it's pretty good. Not bad. Nice. nice. Okay. Uh, can't be special summoned. If this is normal summoned or flipped face up, target one face up monster in the field, change that target to face down defense position once per turn during the end phase. This card was normal summoner fifth place up this turn return to your hand. So the concept is, is you flip your train and then at the end of the turn, it like unflips or it just reflips, whatever. And then you do it again at the start of your turn or your opponent has to do it again. But then again, like you're just, you're just cycling. Like is cycling good enough? I don't Come know. on. Tell us. No, I, oh my God. But like the, the more trains you have or the more Bokoichis you have, the more you draw. So it's like, do you get a critical? Like if you plus one on this, this is pretty great. If you could keep doing this effect, I, I just don't believe it. I think we're in Disneyland. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think it's okay. that good. I, I think if- Final answer. Asterix here, asterisk here, because I don't know this information. If there is a payoff that is actually playable, this is infinitely better. But I'm basing okay. this off the information you have shown me. And I think independently, I don't think this is good enough draw. Final answer. Boy, would you be wrong. Okay, so <laughs> really? let's, let's talk about the Koichi. <laughs> Uh, okay. Dekoichi is crazy. The reason why Dekoichi is crazy, I obviously showed you the, the Tsukiyomi loop with Dekoichi. Uh, that's like the best case scenario. That's not going to happen every game, right? If you have a way to like protect the Dekoichi getting flipped up face down, that back up and forth, you know, all that with Tsukiyomi, uh, that's great. Then you're drawing like a million cards. You're probably going to win the game. But even just in a vacuum, uh, I'll, I'll start by saying this. You're never playing Dekoichi. I just showed you that to bait you. But Dekoichi was just good enough on its own that people ran multiple copies of this card uh, back in its prime. Being a, there was not many cards that just said like draw a card for such a like very simple condition to do so, right? Like obviously there's Graceful Charity, Pot of Greed. Those are like the outliers, but being able to flip up, draw a card, 1400 attack. I know you never look at the stats on this, but 1400 attack is actually not a small number. Like 1400 can actually go toe to toe and beat a lot of things in combat. So it's not like the worst attacker either. Um, also, the dark typing was important. The machine typing, or sorry, dark attribute was important. Machine typing is important. Just a lot of just like good all around just design. Worst case scenario, you set to Koichi, it dies, it replaced itself. You're kind of happy with that. You might draw one card closer to your pot of greed or your graceful charity, right? 
Uh, but if it's six around, you flip it up, draw a card, and now you have an attacker. You can do like a seventh of your opponent's life points if it hits direct, or you can flip it up, draw the card, and then maybe sacrifice it for a bigger card. So now not only did you get the card draw off of it, you then converted it into a larger threat. Uh, and so Dekoichi was uh, played in, in numerous decks, multiple copies, very, very good card. By nowadays standards, it's unplayable because it's just way too slow because it's a flip effect. But old Yu-Gi-Oh, Dekoichi was a house. It was actually a very, very strong card. Okay, okay. I, I Again, I think the comparison to Loot Hoarder is pretty good. Loot Hoarder was played in like very combo-centric decks that needed okay. the additional draw. Like it wasn't played in like any other deck. I guess Yu-Gi-Oh is like that, but I was theoretically hoping there would be more consistent ways of doing this. I guess the way you worded it though, makes a lot of sense in older Yu-Gi-Oh. Like if it once for ones and potentially gets an upside, like you're fine with that. Where in Hearthstone, I don't know if that'd be the case. Maybe it'll run over an opponent's monster too that has like a low defense stat. So then it plus you there as well in combat, right? So then it's plus two already. There's also other cards, not Tsukiyomi, but there might be spell cards, for instance, that can flip the Dekoichi back face down as well. So you can continue to get value off of it. So depending on the circumstances, protecting it actually netted you even more value uh, as well. Just a, just a very solid card by like old Yu-Gi-Oh standards. Yeah. See what you think about this one. Upstart Goblin. Draw one card, and your opponent gains 100 life points. 100% worth it. Played. Thousand. Uh, sorry, uh, you're right. Thousand life points. Played. 100%. I don't care about the life points. I would. I want to draw a card. If if fucking the train was playable, and this is immediate, <laughs> I, I'm I'm for it. 100%. Banned. Was no, it banned? Limit, limited. Banned. Limited. Limited. Why do you say limited? I don't think this is on the same level as Pot of Greed or the other one. Uh, the the angel. What it was? Sorry, what was it called? Uh, Graceful Charity. This is just fine because it cycles. You don't draw an additional card, so I would say limited. But good. Like, you don't care about the life points if you're drawing towards your win condition, I think. Final answer? Final answer. You're correct. I don't have to say anything else. You said it exactly okay. uh, nail on the head. It's interesting. Um, Upstar Goblin's kind of been all over the ban list. It was never banned. It's been limited. I think it's actually limited now, as a matter of fact. But there have been so many decks. It's like you said, It's it took a while for people to realize Upstar Goblin was good. There were older decks, like if you're playing a combo deck like Exodia and such, you would play Upstar Goblin. That's a given. But uh, eventually, it took a lot of people, the, the, the better pro players, to really figure out that you could just play Upstar Goblin in any deck, and it's just good. It makes your deck 37 cards instead of 40 if you're playing the, the minimum count uh and the life points for the most part especially as Yu-Gi-Oh's power level increased really didn't matter if you could kill them at 8k you could probably kill them at 9 or 10k most of the time too there are some circumstances where that is the case um and it, it depends on like at what point in Yu-Gi-Oh that like that mentality shift really happened but for the most part uh yeah like if, if this card was still at three copies people would play it at three um it, it does depend on the deck sometimes too but there have been decks that like value spell cards being in the graveyard and then upstart goblin was just like insane because it's like oh good i just get three free spells in the graveyard and i get to draw more cards fantastic but yeah upstart goblin uh it went from like limited to semi to, it's been all over the place but uh it's a just a solid card i feel like i've gotten a lot better as i've played a lot of card games understanding that like you're fine trading life for getting closer to whatever your win condition is. Like in any card game, I feel like it's always just good. So like, yeah, that seems fine. All together. All right, that was an easy one. Just think about this guy. Card Trooper. Uh, Okay, so three level. Once per turn, you could choose a number from one to three and send that many cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. This card gains 500 attack for each card sent to the graveyard this way until the end of this turn. If this card you control is destroyed, this card you control is destroyed and sent to the graveyard drawing card. If this card you control is destroyed, is that talking about itself? Yes, uh, you have to be in possession of it. So for instance, if you were to steal it and I destroy it on your field, it doesn't get the effect. I understand what you Okay, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. If you choose a number between one and three, then send that many cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. This card gains 500 attack for each card sent this way. Okay, so regardless of the last sentence there, isn't this just good? <laughs> like, I don't you, know, you tell us. Wouldn't you be okay to just always pick three and then you drew three cards and just put them immediately to your graveyard. I don't care about the additional attack. Maybe that's relevant, but like, I don't care. I'm sending three cards to the graveyard. I'm happy with that. If it's my card and they kill it, I also draw a card. Isn't this nuts? I think it's very good. I don't know. I don't, okay, I, okay. I think it's, I, I, I can't, like you don't have this you don't have the special summon it like yeah it's kind of for like here's the like i'll just i'll break this down if the train was played because you drew one card you are drawing a card regardless as long as this card is destroyed on top of that you also just send cards directly from your deck to the graveyard which in Yu-Gi-Oh is very good so this okay. is a good this is a good card final answer final answer is it banned honestly i can see it being banned that's a pretty okay. good card that seems very good okay what about limited definitely limited I don't know about banned. Okay. But like, I, I mean, like, I, okay, please tell me I'm right. Like, my my intuition here is like immediate. Like, I, I, I'd have to talk myself out of this for an hour to think this card's bad. 
you were right on the head. It's not okay. bad. It was limited to one because it was so good. Uh, there's a reason specifically it was limited to one. Uh, let, let, me, <laughs> let me actually show you the reason now that I think about it. Uh, this is when it got really out of hand. And Wait, that is, is why... This, I'm shocked this card's like in the game though. Like, was this printed before or at the same time of Pot of Greed? Like, I feel like they would have to... So at this delusional. point, Pot of Greed is banned. At this point, Pot of Greed is what? banned. What? Are they delusional? <laughs> like, why is this in the game? What Here you go. The... Here's why Here's why Car Trooper got limited. Give this card a read. Machine duplication. Select one machine type monster with 500 or less attack on their side of the field. You could special summon up to two cards with the same name from your deck. That's obviously really great because it cycles insanely well. But on top of that, the once per turn effect, is it unique per Car Trooper? Like, can Correct. I do that? Oh, okay, so that's, yeah, that's fucking both. That's so both. So, so like, this was known as Troop Dupe Scoop format. So <laughs> if you summon a card trooper, activate a machine duplication, you get two more card troopers, you mill nine, and the game is basically over at this point because there's no way your opponent's coming back. And they all die, you're drawing three cards. This was just insane. Uh, so card trooper... I don't really have to say much else because you're you're basically right. This card is incredibly good. Uh, it was limited to one very quickly. Now it's at three because it's it's slow. But by older Yu-Gi-Oh standards, uh, very high value card. It sets up your graveyard. The 1900 attack it gets to when you milled three is actually relevant because it goes toe to toe, if not beats most normal summons in the game at that attack stat. Uh, so even though uh, it'll go back to 400 during your opponent's turn, you don't care because you already got the value off of it. If Car Trooper sticks around, that's just like a nightmare because then they get to mill three more. Uh, Car Trooper is just a phenomenal, phenomenal card. And uh, people love it. It's just a cute little guy. And he's uh, he's very good. He's very good. Yep, yeah, it makes sense. That's fucking crazy, All right. man. Speaking of Pot of Greed, speaking of Pot of Greed, let's show you his brother. Oh my God. This is the same. This isn't the same family? Uh, what is that? What's that weird? I don't actually, I don't think I've ever seen this. Pod of Avarice? Avarice? Avarice. Avarice. Target five monsters in your graveyard, shuffle all five into the deck, and draw two cards. First and foremost, what is up with this, dude? My God. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yu-Gi-Oh! And I, I imagine Hearthstone does this as well. When Yu-Gi-Oh! bans cards, they typically release new versions of the banned card that have some sort of stipulation tied to them to kind of like, you know, channel the spirit of the old card. So anytime you see a pot card, it's probably going to draw two cards. Uh, but since it's not Pot of Greed, it's not just going to do that for free. So Pot of Avarice here, you have to shuffle five monsters back into the grave first. Interesting. Or see, from your grave into the Avarice deck. means extreme greed for wealth. Interesting that this is, I guess, I guess the concept is, is like, you just want those monsters back into your deck. Shuffle five, or shuffle five into your, okay. If you don't have five monsters in your graveyard, how does this interact? You can't activate it. You have to have five. You have to have minimum five. You have to, okay. I will also let you know, if your opponent interacts with it, and let's say banishes one of those cards in your graveyard, or shuffles them back into the deck somehow, at like, you know, at, you know, instant speed, uh, Pot of Avarice doesn't resolve. Okay, so you, so you don't get to draw Minimum, your it has to be five. You shuffle Correct. all five into your deck, then draw two. And it's important that you shuffle first, because then you could potentially draw those monsters. But again, I feel like you're okay with that some of the time, depending on what it is. I was going to say this card's not great, but honestly, it's probably fine. I think, again, drawing two is fine. And then if you're putting monsters in your deck, you might get one that you want. And depending on how you build your deck, this is probably a huge upside. Because, like, what if your win cons are those monsters? This is probably great. I, I would imagine this is very good. I, I can't, again, it's another thing where it's like, I don't understand why this would be bad. The only reason I think this might be bad is because A, if your opponent does interact with you, it sucks. But then in theory, they're using a card to stop you from using a card. So it's one for one. And then on top of it, it's like, maybe your your deck becomes a little less consistent with shuffling monsters in your graveyard, but you've shown me enough cards that are like tutoring specific monsters that this is probably fine. I don't think it's on the same level as Pot of Greed. I think Pot of Greed is still like a, definitely a better card, but probably really, really good. Final answer? Final answer. This card is banned. This card is 100% banned. This card was banned for like six years. It was crazy. Shit. Uh, so Pot of Avarice, uh, everything else you said is right. I think you just missed the part about uh, it being banned. Uh, so again, you have to remember context, right? There's no Pot of Greed anymore. There's like very few cards, as you've seen, like we're pretty desperate for card draw, right? This does still say draw two cards, so it does plus you a card, but you need to have five monsters in the graveyard in order to set it up. I will say Pot of Avarice was limited to one, very early on because I think they were scared of it being like another pot of greed. And so they didn't want it to have like people having three copies of this card. Um, but when it was released, I believe they then moved it to three copies. And there were some decks that could take advantage of having three copies of Pot of Avarice. But if you don't have the graveyard set up, this card is not particularly good. What happened was, is that later on in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, as we started getting these summoning mechanics, synchro summoning, Xyz summoning, etc., it was a lot easier to put 
five or more monsters in your graveyard on the very first turn. So now Pot of Avarice all of a sudden basically becomes Pot of Greed because that that slow accumulation of monsters in the graveyard like early Yu-Gi-Oh had was no longer at play. Pot of Avarice would definitely be more of like a mid-game slash late game, let's get me back into the game type of card. And it was, and it was good. As the summoning mechanics came out, it was really easy just to be like, oh, I'm just gonna, if Pot of Avarice is at multiple copies, it's not hard to resolve multiple copies at once. Uh, so it was banned for a very, very long time. And uh, now it's back because I think it's just it's just too slow. And uh, yeah, that, that's just the legacy of Pot of Avarice. A very, people were very excited when this card got announced because everyone just wanted to draw two cards again, right? And uh, was it was basically, it was like an auto-include one-up just in every deck just because it's like, okay, yeah, if it gets like a mid-game, I'll just get two cards and it's great. It's cool. And you can shuffle back some of your best monsters into the deck to, to reuse. That's nice. Yeah. I was going to say, in Hearthstone, I don't know how good this would be, but I'd be, I'd be curious if you asked CGB how, how good this would be in Magic. Because like, in Hearthstone, I don't think I care for the most part. Like, it may be in, like, very fatigue-heavy matchups, this might be very good. All right, a few left. I haven't shown you a trap card this whole time, so here you go. Okay. Oh, uh, again, I'm sorry for the pronunciation here. Legacy of Yada Garusu. Garasu. Oh, close. Garasu, okay. close. Activate one of these effects. Draw one card. Activate only if your opponent controls a face-up spirit monster. Draw two cards. So again, cycling is one for one, but you can only activate on your opponent's turn. You can activate during your turn, but you have to set it face down for a turn first before you're able to fire this. Okay. And then activate only if you're... So worst case scenario, it's one. It's cycling. Best case yep. scenario, you, you, you're plus one-ing. And depending on the format, you can make a judgment call if you want to actually wait to draw two cards. But... I mean, you've, you've already shown me cards that cycle, so, like, this is probably playable, I guess. I guess the stipulation here is, like, you have to wait until your opponent, at least your opponent's turn, right? Correct, correct. You don't get to fire it immediately. So it is a slower form of card draw, but if you're going first and you play this, you're probably okay with it. Going second, it sucks a little bit more, obviously, but going first, I mean, if you're consistency, it's probably fine. I think this is good. This is probably playable. It, again, like it, you're telling me that drawing two cards gets people excited and we saw the train, which cycles, this is probably fine. Even if it's delayed, I think it's good. It's, I, I don't think it's banned. There's no way this is banned, but limited. Final answer? Final answer? Yeah. Legacy has had a very weird course throughout Yu-Gi-Oh's history. I don't want to say Legacy specifically, but uh, it, it'll make sense when I, when I give you the context here. So... Legacy, there's another card that's just called Jar of Greed instead of Pot of Greed. Instead of drawing you two cards, it draws you one card. And that's literally all it says. It just says draw one card. Uh, it's a trap card like this. And Legacy of Yadia is basically the same card, except it has that other part with the spirit monster. That'll rarely ever come up if it does, cool. But you're mainly just using this as a, a way to cycle, right? So typically, these draw cards uh, are used in either like combo decks, like Exodia, for instance. Uh, sometimes like specific burn strategies, uh, there are reasons that you want specifically trap draw power, even though they are just cycling. Uh, that's like what these cards are typically used for. Uh, so never, normal decks would never play these cards just because they were just too slow by Yu-Gi-Oh standards. You'd rather have like hard removal or you'd rather have uh, just like, just better cards that are just then, because you've already seen, there's Pot of Greed, there's Graceful Charity, there's, uh, you know, there's Upstart Goblin. There, spell draw is definitely way more high value than trap draw, let's say. Okay. Now, where this gets interesting from like a card economy perspective, and this is something that's happened more recently in the retro format scene, is the value of these draw traps uh, not necessarily getting you a plus one like Pot of Greed, but making your opponent minus one in terms of card economy. So let me explain a bit. If you were to go turn one, set Legacy of Yanagarasu face down, pass the turn. Let's say your opponent has a card that can destroy a spell or trap on the field. They activate that card. You chain Legacy of Yanagarasu to that. So you are now up a card because they wasted a card to destroy your card. And they wasted that card that's going to destroy a spell or trap. So now if you set another trap card, you might feel safe that that trap card's not going to get destroyed by that card that they used to destroy it, Right. So it's sort of like reverse card economy, where instead of you gaining the plus, you're minusing your opponent because you're using this to bait them into thinking you have a good card. But then it's like, haha, I get to now draw a card and you wasted that card. And it's a huge swing in tempo in these older formats where having just like an, an a plus one up on your opponent is huge. And so a lot of these older formats, GOAT format, uh, Edison format specifically, have seen a huge rise in these draw traps to bait the opponent into using their spell and trap removal into thinking they're getting something good. And then they get gotcha because they get uh, uh, either Jar of Greed or Legacy of Yadagarasu get flipped. 
Uh, so from like a a like card theory like gameplay perspective, this these cards have become very high value and like very old Yu-Gi-Oh. It's been very fascinating to see this play out. Okay, no, that makes that's it's kind of cool the the way you described it. Um, it's like yeah. the, the mind game of like. There's a lot of mind games with these cards. But, so Absolutely. this card was it, I don't know if you actually said it. So this card was played. Uh, so historically it was played in very specific decks, but in like older retro. The formats now that people have revisited, like playing these older formats again, these cards may not have been played historically. They are now seeing okay. tons of play as so, a result of that. It, like now with all the knowledge that people have, like this card is considered good. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. I wouldn't say it was bad before. It's just only certain decks would play it before, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I, it's like tunnel okay. vision on my combo. That's interesting. Okay. Precisely. Precisely. Okay. Yeah. And it's just the way the formats have kind of have developed as well. All right. Two left. Two left. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, it's, it's, it's funny talking about this with like little, I, I mean, I, I don't know if I have little Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge now considering how much I've seen, but like it's, I, I would have thought this card was playable just because the train was playable. And it's like almost the same concept, right? Because you're delaying the flip. Like you have to delay the flip, right? Like over a turn. Yeah, but having it, having it on a body is a much different story. That's Because fair. the body is like pressure. All right, I got what you mean. I got what you mean. Uh, okay, Destiny Hero, Disc Commander. Uh, 300, I'm going to start reading the attack stat because that is making it seem like it's very relevant. 300, 300. Okay, when well, this card is special summoned for the graveyard, draw to fucking insane. What? Disgusting. Like, there's so many cards that interact with this band. Final answer. Don't lie to me. What if I told you this card is legal? Right now. Yep. What about before? The before times? Was it was It, it did banned? get banned before. Okay. You are correct. <laughs> there we go. It's legal now because they errated it. Uh, so it is no... He is, he, he is a shell of his former self, unfortunately. Uh, let me find you the errata here really quick. It's, that is uh, so funny. Okay. It's depressing. Yeah. yeah like, so this like card, it, like, it's not banned right now. Okay. We're like, <laughs> it's not, it's not. Here's the errata. Give the errata a read. See how they murdered our boy. Ew, why is it like they just changed the color palette? It's the same art. Destiny hero. Okay. We're not going to read the name. Cannot be special summoned from the graveyard. The turn this card was sent to the graveyard. Oh, this card was special summoned to the graveyard. You can draw two cards. Yeah. That makes once per duel. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> I was waiting for you to get to that the, part. The, the first, the first line's already brutal because, like, you probably yeah. cycle this multiple times in a single turn. Like, what's for two? So, for context, uh, Destiny Hero Disc Commander. Uh, interestingly enough, this card. So, Yu-Gi-Oh does this thing where they release video games. They actually have promo cards that are in the video games, and this was one of those. So, this card actually was quite a, a lot of money, just because it was hard to get. Because if you didn't buy the video game. It was kind of gated behind a $30 item because it was like one of the Game Boy games, right? So initially, it was kind of hard to get as a result of that. But during this time, there were multiple ways to special summon monsters from the graveyard. Even in the Destiny Hero archetype, there was specific cards that could like resurrect this guy. So there was even more than the traditional generic cards that you were already playing. I'm talking about Destiny Hero Fearmonger for anyone who's wondering specifically. And so... On top of that, it just has so much going for it. It's a dark, which is like the best type, or excuse me, best attribute in the game. Warrior, which is arguably one of the best types in the game, which made it searchable. So it's not like, there was like multiple ways to get to this guy. Um, being just like all of the stats lined up with so many specific things that basically entire decks were just built around abusing the fact that you could draw two cards with this guy. And uh, it was very fun while you could do it because uh, Pot of Greed was banned, obviously. And so this is one of the cards that you could use to fill the void. And you have to go through some steps to obviously get him out to the field. But man, I misplayed with this card. It was so great. And uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's I mean, very... It's, it's fun when you're playing it. Yeah, of course, yeah. And when your opponent's <laughs> playing it, you hate yourself. But uh, yeah, this card was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was Pot of Greed with steps, but it was still Pot of Greed. So we didn't care. Okay, last one. This one's going to be a very interesting one to end on. The beginning of the... The artwork is very unique. Beginning of the end. Activate if there are only... Sorry, my God. Activate only if there are seven or more dark monsters in your graveyard. Remove from... Play five dark monsters from your graveyard to draw three cards. Activate if there are only seven or more dark monsters in your graveyard. Remove... This has the same stipulation of, like, if your opponent interacts with your graveyard as you're casting it, it doesn't cast. They take one out, right? Um, uh, I am going to say yes, but I'm not 100% okay. sure. I'm pretty sure that is the case, though. Remove from play far, five dark monsters from your graveyard to draw three. Okay, how likely is it to send dark monsters to your graveyard, would you say? Like, I would say 
very likely so in a single turn let's say i'm going first single turn okay. what's the average dark monsters i'm putting in the graveyard is it seven? well okay think of it this way <laughs> you you know your your sword soul combos right how many monsters are you putting into the graveyard on your first turn imagine they were all dark like five six I'd say maybe a little less. I honestly can't remember. I want to say four, five, six, somewhere around there. Sure, sure. But like, yeah, just, you know, estimate from what you remember. In Dark Monsters, you could do the same thing. I mean, it, this this is one of those cards that only gets better as time passes on. Because the more okay. ways you can put mo Dark Monsters in your graveyard, the better this card becomes. So at some point, there would be a critical mass that it is too easy to do this. And you would put five fodder Dark Monsters away or like banish them. Listen, maybe in early Yu-Gi-Oh, this wasn't great, but I'm sure at this point in time, drawing three cards for sending monsters to your graveyard, which you're happy with, and I'm sure there's even some card that like likes banishing dark monsters. So probably really good, I would imagine, at some point. Like, I don't think in early Yu-Gi-Oh, this was like necessarily the best thing ever, because I don't know how likely you are to get seven dark monsters into your graveyard. But even during the game where you're playing a dark monsters deck, if you drew this card later on, you would be so happy because you would probably get to that point where the seven dark monsters are in your graveyard. So probably playable. I actually have no idea if this would be banned. It really is contingent on how likely you are to do this on your first turn. Because I think over the course of two turns, I mean, over the course of two turns, it's probably still great to draw three cards. But if you could do this in one turn, like it's maybe the best card you've shown me. So I, I think it would be very good. You think contingent you if you could do it. Sure. Yeah, go banned. Oh, uh, beginning of the end. Where where do I start okay. with the beginning of the end? That's a great question. Okay, so I think you were right in the fact that everyone just got all like wide eyed seeing the fact that you could draw three cards, and it's and it's free, right? It's you play. You're going plus two off of this because banishing the five darks, you're not losing any other card economy aside from maybe resources in the graveyard, right? But like in terms of raw cards, you play one and you're getting three, so you're going plus two. It's the dream. And it's dark. Like, dark is, wants to be in the graveyard. It's really easy to get darks in the graveyard. The set this card was released in was a dark-supported set, Phantom Darkness. You can see it says PTDN in, like, the bottom two-thirds right there. It just, it never, never fully came to fruition. Uh, there have been, as you said, as Yu-Gi-Oh! aged, and as we got more summoning mechanics, and it was easier to dump monsters in the graveyard. There were some decks that were uh, degenerate, like FTK style of decks that were like almost exclusively all dark monsters. And beginning of the end doesn't have a once per turn restriction anywhere on it. So hypothetically, you could th load your grave with like 12, 15, 20 dark monsters on the first turn. You could banish 10 of them with multiple copies at the beginning of the end because the rest of what your deck's doing is drawing you cards already. And then you beginning of the end and draw three. But it's just like, it, it was never like a card that aside from like that one particular deck, that really ever got to see like its full potential, unfortunately. Uh, never made its way anywhere on the ban list, which is kind of crazy to think that it's like a draw three cards that seems so easy to do on paper. Um, it's just too slow. It is, it is just too slow that um, I don't want to say it never saw play. In older Yu-Gi-Oh, some dark decks may have played like a singular copy of this, kind of maybe in place of a pot of avarice, let's say, uh, because you get to draw three instead of draw two. But you might even play both, to be honest, depending on the circumstances. But aside from those like newer, like modern decks that could just dump their whole deck into the graveyard and just draw a million cards, that was kind of it. That that was like, it's, it's crazy to think a card this... Uh, powerful just didn't really see like more play than it did uh so i was hoping to kind of get you here at the wait, end wait, it so like it's I not did. it's so. not banned is what you're saying so it's not it, it wasn't it, banned it wasn't limited it's it's been at three copies for, just give forever. it 10 years just give it 10 years just give it 10 years <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm sure, I'm sure in 10 years, this card will be playable, right? Like Basically, like, what would happen is anytime a degenerate strategy came up that played this card, this wasn't, like, the problem, right? It was, like, they banned the cards that were the more degenerate aspects oh, that, that's of fair. those that decks. Is, yes. And yeah, so yeah. then when that deck got banned, there was no reason to play this card anymore. But um, this is a very, like, old, pretty card that people just want to play because it says draw three cards. And it's just, it's just, it just, it's just not there. It's contingent on something being broken. Absolutely. Like you need, you need something here, but yeah, like it, it, it needs the critical mass of just because you, you only want to do this your first turn. I'm guessing, right? Like you, you want to like jam all the, the stuff in your graveyard and then draw three cards. Yeah. Like in it, older Yu-Gi-Oh, you could get away with, you know, cause the games go longer. Like if this is like a reset button later on, sure. But modern Yu-Gi-Oh, you're trying to abuse this very first turn. And yeah. it, this card can be awful if you don't have like the combo potential to set it up. Like if your hand is too beginning of the end and the other three cards in your hand aren't going to get you seven darks in the grave, these are just bricks. 
right? So it's uh, it's interesting how well this the card is designed, actually. Also, banishing darks from your graveyard can be a detriment because you want them in the graveyard for some reason or another. Uh, so it really, it, it's very contextual, but uh, it's just, it's crazy this card has not seen more play than it has, to be honest. I, I, I mean, yeah, give it 10 years. We'll come back and then we'll, we'll, yeah, see, we'll see. Here's, yeah, we'll here, see. Here's an, here's an idea for you, because you didn't show me any card that would like this. So I'm curious to see if this would get played. Call it like bot, Pot of Banish or something. I don't know. Draw three cards. The third card you draw is banished. Interesting. Uh, huh. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll have to do a part two of this if people liked seeing the draw cards, because uh, we only got to like the first oh, is half there, of the Is that actually a card of the game? <laughs> uh, maybe we'll save that for next time. We'll wait, next time. You, wait, did I just, I was like thinking to myself, like you showed me a lot of like discarding, but I wonder if they've actually, they, they probably, there's enough design in the game where it's like you would take the risk of maybe banishing a card. Next time, Raren, next time, next time. So guys, that's gonna wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout outs to Shadow1317, Tim00x3, MBT Play Medulce, Moto, Cameron L. Smith, The Synchro Guy, Pony Stark, Dan the Man Hoban, Little Fade Leaf, Draconic, Dylan Rare Hunter, JW11860, Brian Dancer of Class 7, Flannel Daddy, Twinkle Muncher, literally all of the guinea pigs, Cheeks McLapperty, Stolfin Amethyst, MBT Cancel Bio Community Soon, Cancel Bio Committee Soon, Cancel Bio Players Soon, Wonder Waffle, Main Phase Tua, Synchro, on that thing. Daniel Howell, life keeps using solemn judgment on my hopes and dreams, and Naveed Mandavi. Thank you so much again for watching, and we will see you next time.